Hi guys, Frostfangs here, welcome back once again, of course, to uh, the Paladins video. We are now on the PTS, the Puppet Test Server, for the new update with Yagarath, although for some reason they didn't put it here on the menu screen, so it just looks like the old update, but as soon as I hit the Champions page, you realise that we do have, yeah, Yagarath here, although she didn't load in, there we go. If you haven't seen me cover an update before for Paladins, maybe this is your first time, or maybe you just didn't remember, what I usually do is one video introducing the character, which is what you're watching right now, the intro kind of to Yagarath, and then a little while after this video goes up, I'll have a proper video on Yagarath playing her in matches, we'll just try it on the target practice today and I'll go over all of her cards and her kit and stuff. Then of course I'll cover all of the other PTS stuff, so definitely stay tuned to the channel, turn notifications on if you want to. I feel like I barely ever asked to do that, but it makes sense now with the PTS. But anyway, onto the video, Yagarath is here, her tagline is the Devourer, she is a tank, she has 6,500 health, but that is a little bit misleading and I'll get into why obviously, because she is the most unique character release we've had in a really long time. She is a stance switcher, similar to a lot of other tarot characters that there are in other games, none that I can think of off the top of my head right now, but she's very similar to that. She basically looks like a scarier, more monster-like, and I guess more worm-like version of Rom, and she is also the biggest character we've ever had released, and that is very, very noticeable when we jump into the target practice. She's freaking huge, because she is a stance-switching character. She's got a bit of a complicated kit, as you can tell just from this screen here. The advanced section has a lot more text than usual, but that is a good thing. We'll start off with Caustic Spray, or Caustic Spray, Trail of, and then I think it's cut off, Trail of Acid. There we go. <laughs> Pretty much all of her stuff is area damage, but you spray acid from your maw, your mouth, because the perspective that you have is also from inside side her mouth which is a little bit different but you hit the ground which leaves behind a pool of acid you can also spray and not hit the ground if you aim it a little bit high it lasts four seconds has a range of 90 units which is actually quite short and you can have a maximum of six pools placed at once i did try it on the target practice a little bit already and they don't stack which i thought they did i probably should have noticed when i watched the patch note show but you can just leave a bunch of pools on one person it won't tick them multiple times so you do want to spread them out a little bit and try and hit multiple people at the same time instead of just waiting on one i could be wrong i don't think i am but i might be but they just chose not to mention it there and then the travel form they also missed out a piece of information you drop a series of five acid pools behind you as you roll, but that does have a cooldown and they don't mention it anywhere. I don't know what it is either, so I'll check now as we go into target practice, but that should be mentioned here. We are on the PTS though, so that might get changed by the time she goes live and they might be a hot fix or something midway through the PTS, which I will cover, of course. But the acid pools themselves, the things on the floor, deal 33 damage every 0.25 and also slow by 15%, which is pretty good. Then for your right click, you have your Persing Quills, which I'd say is the most interesting part when it comes to kind of her damage output. You fire out a Persing Quill every 0.15, although, although I also feel like that's a little bit misleading and I'll explain why but they deal 170 damage on hit and explode for 50 in a small area after you fire them out the interesting part is if you're hitting somebody with your acid spray you hit them then with your right click it increases all of the damage they take from every single source by 10 percent for three seconds which doesn't seem like much but that really will make a big difference and you can hold up to eight charges they have an eight second cooldown i didn't mention it but the caustic spray has a meter there's a bunch of cards that play around with it i don't know if the cooldown's the same for the quills as it is for the thing you have in your travel form which is charging forward for four seconds hitting an enemy in that form will deal 500 damage and also knock them back a little bit kind of similar to a ram f but just way more speedy then another thing that's a little bit weird is it says it can't be cancelled but it can but you just have to stance switch you just can't cancel it by right clicking again you can just change into your you know normal stationary stance and it will cancel the speed ability you don't have to just zoom around for more time than you want to then for yagarath's q which has 15 seconds of cooldown you have hardening or primal vision which is also a pretty interesting ability it is also area damage you hunker down for four seconds up to four seconds and increase your damage reduction by 25 percent that is another thing i should mention because i don't know if it's noted anywhere here but she does have a passive she actually has passive damage damage reduction she also has passive cc reduction which is really interesting i don't know if the numbers are mentioned anywhere i think it is yeah just here on the form swap thing so we'll get to that in a second but after the ability ends you deal damage to enemies within 25 units based on the duration of the ability the base damage is 300 up to 1100 but when i tested that in the target practice it was a thousand i'll need to check that but you can't be stunned when this ability is active it's basically just kind of hunkering down and negating stuff of course you can refire to cancel it early but then in the travel form you let out a series of pulses five of them although sometimes it was doing one so i think you'd have to hold the button down and then every Everybody within 150 units gets revealed to you and your team and you can move around whilst it's pulsing obviously then you finally have your f other than the ultimate which is the form swap of course implanted you can't move and then if you're in the travel form you get to roll around and use the other abilities but the interesting part about it is that if you're swapping forms it actually can't be stopped by a cripple so you're going to be able to swap whenever you want there is a short cooldown five seconds so even if you are crippled you will be able to stand switch but the really interesting part that is the passive to this ability or just Yagarath's passive in general is that you have a base damage reduction of 40 percent on top of 25 percent with the Q, which is a crazy amount considering how much health she has. That does only apply though when you're planted and you're also immune to most forms of crowd control. I think this is also only when you're planted, but I'm not 100% sure. And instead, a portion of that CC gets converted into a stun. Really, really interesting kit, as I'm sure you're able to tell. We just have the ultimate left and it is also pretty unique, although I'm not sure if I like it all that much. You target an enemy, start pulling them towards you. I don't know what the range limit is on this, but you swap your current health pool, which is 6,500 to 4,000. I don't know if you still have the damage reduction. I don't think you do, but basically if you lose that 4,000 health, you'll just 
convert back to how you were before. It doesn't kill you or anything. Your target is then immune to damage and CC and cannot move during the process, but they can actually fire at you or fire at anything else. I think you are kind of locked camera-wise into Yagarath, but I'm not really sure exactly what it looks like from the other perspective. You can only use this in your planted form for pretty obvious reasons, and that is pretty much it for Yagarath's kit. That took a while. If you want to hear the ultimate sound or the voice pack, I'll just give you a second of it. Or I guess I won't because that doesn't work. Does the ultimate one work? Cool, pretty much what you'd expect for Yagarath's voice. She will be coming with a couple skins, or I guess colorways. That one is really, really interesting. That's called Grave Worm. That's even more scary, although I didn't think that was possible. Caustic, which looks really, really cool. And then Golden Yagarath, which also looks pretty fantastic. I'm loving the kind of purple reflective shit going on here. It looks great. She also has two emotes, the Hello Darlings, which I haven't actually seen, which is kind of just her doing a little giggle and then a wave. Very, very creepy. And also the default one, which is what you'll see most of the time. Of course, she's huge in game, so it really does give a bit of a sense of... I guess, Dread, and then for her MVP poses, she's got the standard one, which is just standing, and then Tempest, which does also look relatively scary. And then finally, the loadouts is taking a while. I'll try to speed it up a little bit. We've got End of an Era. This is on your hardening ability, which increases effective it is by 20% at level, but reduces its duration by 10%, and they also scale the same amount. Then we have Out of Time, which halves the efficiency of hardening, but then for a duration afterwards, you still gain its benefits. Another interesting card, Spreading Domain, is pretty straightforward. It just heals you if you don't cancel it before it ends. I don't think many people will be running this. It's a bit of a weird one. Violent Birth is something I didn't think I'd ever be saying in a video, but you reduce the cooldown of your acceleration by 0.8 a level after you use your hardening, and this does have an internal timer, which again makes it not that good of a card, but I could definitely see this one being used. You have Collateral Damage, we're on to the Form Swap, which gives you Lifesteal for 3 seconds after you swap into your planted form. I can imagine this one being used quite a bit. You then have Deadly Pursuit, which increases your movement speed by 20% for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds after you switch into your travel form, and also one that gives you a shield after you stance switch. I could definitely see both of those getting a decent amount of usage and then we have triumphant return which is the last one on the stance switch which reduces the acid consumption by 90 percent which is pretty damn good for 0.4 after you switch into your planted form this is another one that i think might be picked up quite a bit onto her quills and also her acceleration you can generate some of your acid whenever you hit somebody with your quills you can reduce the cooldown of your hardening whenever you hit somebody with your quills also increase the duration of the vulnerability whenever you hit somebody with your acid pool and your quill combo thing and then also a bit of a heal after you hit somebody with your quills and then finally the armor slash weapon you can increase your ammo capacity pretty standard card. You can reduce the duration and the effectiveness of CC by 5% a level. I can imagine if you're going up against a CC heavy team, rocking a setup with this in it level 5 could be really, really useful. Then we also have Futile Efforts, which reduces the cooldown of your quills for 0.05 every time you hit somebody with your spray. I don't know if that's also the pulls. I'm pretty sure it's just when you're actually, you know, holding left click and spraying people and stuff, but I could be wrong with that one. I'll have to test that at some point. And then finally, you have Towering Presence, which increases the amount of health you have when you're using your ultimate, which is 4k, which is pretty much 5% a level. And there we go. That is pretty much everything about Yagareth, other than her talents, which we didn't go over. She has got the first one, Corrosive Acid. It's just a pretty straightforward buff to your acid by increasing the damage of the spray, the damage of the pools, but also giving a movement speed buff to allies who are in your pools by 20%. They're actually decently sized, so this is not too bad of a talent. Then the one you get at level 2 is called Sight Begets Strength. I'm probably just going to call that the Baguette talent, but allies with in range of your vision, gain a 100 health shield and also 50 minute movement speed for 4 seconds every time you pulse. I imagine this will be the one you see the least, just because it's kind of hard to get that to work in the proper way, but finally we have Unnatural Persistence, which heals you for 25 every 0.25 while on the objective and for 1 second after you leave it, and the effect also increases the longer you're near the objective, up to 65 every 0.25. So I really think it's going to be, do you want to be tanky, Unnatural Persistence, or do you want to do damage, Corrosive Acid, and then Sight Baguette Strength is kind of just going to be left behind, but of course it's just my opinion, it'll really just depend how she ends up you know playing in live because on the bts it's incredibly hard to judge a character so let's finally jump into the shooting range and actually show her off i feel like this video is going to be way longer than i wanted to which is why i'm splitting it up i usually split up the intro and like the full video just that i don't take up too much time in the gameplay video and i can make them both a little bit longer but this one is probably the longest intro i've ever done for a character because she is you know quite complicated we'll go ahead and grab corrosive acid and then then for the loadout doesn't really matter i'll just grab this one so it doesn't influence us too much and this is the point of view you've got if you want to see the inspect we'll just go ahead and pop it there we go. She actually has two. She has one where she screams, then one where she kind of touches her little spiky things there. And that is the stance switch into the rolling form. For some reason, she really reminds me of a character from like Star Wars Battlefront from like the PS2, but I could just be completely misremembering something. Let's go ahead and deploy first though before we show the things in the F. I feel like it could do with being a little bit speedier, but I think that might make it too quick and then people will be stance switching too much. So it makes sense that it takes, you know, like a second or so. Yeah, we have the left click, which is the spray, and you can see it leaves pulls there on 
the ground, which ticks, although for some reason Victor isn't taking damage anymore. She's, of course, going to have some bugs. We're on the test server. I imagine she will even when she goes into live, but that is the left click. You can definitely go through somebody pretty quick, especially the squishier characters. I don't know if I take as good as some of the other tanks, but if somebody's pretty stationary or you're trying to look down the objective, I think it's going to be a really, really decent attack. We'll go roll over to the Victors. I'll pop the speed buff so you can see how stupid bloody quick you go with this. And if you hit anybody, you just deal a little bit of damage and then we'll deploy back into this form. We'll spray a little bit, chuck a couple little right clicks in there as well to show you what they're like. And then they have a little indicator there when they're taking the bonus damage. If you use it on its own, it will just look like that. It does seemingly go through people, which I didn't actually know. I, I guess it sticks on an object because it seems like it's just going through that Victor. Yeah, it definitely is. So I actually thought it stuck to people before I did this right now, but I guess it doesn't. Just reposition so I could actually check and it does indeed go through Victor and then hits the people at the back, which is kind of interesting. I didn't know that. So you could technically go through multiple people if you've got the right angle, but she is pretty damn big as you can see. So it might be kind of hard to get the angle where you're clipping multiple people. Let's just roll over here so I can show you how big she is in comparison to somebody like Victor. She is fucking huge, I think is the appropriate way to word it. She is absolutely massive. So it might seem like a lot that she's got 6,500 health and also 40% damage reduction, but realistically, it's going to be very easy to hit her and also pretty easy to avoid her. I'd imagine as a flank with a lot of movement, you can just go around a corner and then Yagarath can't really deal too much damage to you. Just to show you the queue, it's got a little indicator there, which is really cool. The range also seems to expand when you hold it for longer, which I didn't know beforehand. It's got a pretty big cooldown, gives you damage reduction, also gives a bit of damage at the end. You could definitely combo that with some stuff. I really do think with some team compositions and some maps, she's going to do really, really well. And on other teams and other maps, she's going to have a really, really hard time. So she's a very unique, but also very specific character. Here is the left click. If you're in the travel form, you can boost to make it so that you actually spread the pools even further apart, but it's just your left click basically attached to your travel form. And then there's the pulse as well to show you kind of the reveal which you have. And I feel like I'm running out of words to describe what I'm trying to get across, but we'll just stand switch here. We'll try and burst down the pit. You can combo in some left clicks there. It isn't like the fastest time to kill ever, but it is, you know, still pretty speedy. There definitely are some bugs with it. One thing that I want to check real quick is if I hit the Q and cancel it instantly, is the radius smaller? Or is it just the animation that makes it look like it's smaller? Because if I tap Q here and instantly cancel it, it seems like it doesn't actually hit everybody, although I'm not really in the range. It definitely didn't hit the Victor, so I guess it is actually lined up with the kind of animation of it expanding there. The only thing I haven't shown is the ultimate, but one more interesting note I want to mention real quick is I don't know how the hell they're going to do skins with this. I feel like Ruckus has a similar problem, but nowhere near as much because he's got more stuff where you can place things. He's also got his guns on the side, whereas with Vora, you're just spinning stuff from your tongue there in the middle and you're blasting your little guys on the left and the right. So I really don't know how they're going to do skins with this, but I'm sure they will look fantastic in third person because she looks really, really good. What is the radius on the ultimate? It's actually pretty damn big because I didn't think I'd be able to hit that Victor there at the back. Let's go see what the max range is for it. Let's go somewhere here like 225. Is he still in range? No, that Victor is though. So let's go forward a little bit. I reckon it's probably going to be around 200, right? Can we still get him from there? No, so I'm going to go a little bit closer. Definitely thought it was going to be 200, but let's go 155 and see if he's in range. He is in range at like 150-ish. Go kind of here in the middle. So it's like 175. That would be my guess guess because it isn't 200 so it's like 175 somewhere around then we go ahead and use the ability this is what it looks like i'm completely camera locked here i can't really do anything i'm just waiting for that victor to get to me he can actually fire back but obviously he is a bot and you do the animation and he's gone it is pretty much just a different take on an execute ultimate that was the max range though so obviously it took a hell of a lot longer i imagine if you use it somewhere here where the victor is a lot closer they're not really gonna be able to do very much to cancel you from you know getting rid of them and they're there we go. It's got a pretty damn cool animation. I really am in two minds about the Ultima. I don't know if I love it or if I hate it. I feel like it's going to be really, really good, but also really, really weak. It's just going to depend. I think it is going to be pretty situational in a one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, you're pretty much just going to insta-win the one-on-one -on -one because it's very hard for somebody to deal 4,000 damage in the time that it takes for you to execute them if you were within 170 units or whatever. Then in a team scenario, you're pretty much guaranteeing that they're going to pay attention to you because you're pulling one of them in. So the rest of the team is going to focus you and try and get rid of you and get rid of your 4,000 health, which will then drop the team member. But that means most of your team can still be doing damage whilst they're focused focusing on you. So it is kind of a strong ability, but I don't think you're going to get like a crazy amount of kills with it. It's just going to be annoying for the enemy team to deal with. I don't know. I don't really want to spend 15 minutes here talking about it until I've had more time to play around with it until she goes into live. And then maybe I'll have a more solid opinion because it's really hard for me to tell right now if it's going to be really, really crappy or if it's going to be a really, really strong ultimate that is going to be super annoying to go against. I think again, just like Yagarath in general, it's going to be very, very team dependent and also very, very situational. If I had to use one word to describe her, which I don't think I've used to describe any other champion we've had release is unique. She doesn't really have too many elements from other characters put into her kit and she's got some really interesting abilities. She's a freaking turret character. We don't have a turret character yet and I think I said a while ago I'd love to have a turret character and the whole reason why I'm in two minds about her is because when I thought about a turret character in Paladins I just assumed that they'd have a gun. I didn't think we'd be kind of spraying acid and also blasting little explosive kind of teeth things. <laughs> just to summarize I think she is really really unique. I like most things about her kit. Her character design is really really cool. The thing I don't really know if I like just yet is the ultimate but I really think that'll be something that I'll be able to tell 
little bit better with time. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, of course, in the comment section down below. I will have more videos on Yagarath coming soon. I'll probably cover once or twice on the PTS, and then we'll play her again when she goes in to live. The animation on that also feels a little bit sluggish. It'll be hard to tell. We'll just have to see. So yeah, this has been the introduction to Yagarath. It is about 2 a.m. when I'm recording this video, because, of course, the PTS goes up on American time. Hop on the PTS yourself if you want to. I'll be playing for probably the next maybe half week or a week, depending on how long it's active for, and I can actually record stuff on it, because people, you know, usually tend to die off a little bit, but we do have a new character this time, so I imagine it'll probably be pretty active. Thank you all for the love on the videos. Of course, I'm really looking forward to playing more Yagarath, the most unique character by far we've had in a really, really long time. There's a bunch of stuff in this update, balance stuff, maps. We've also got a few little skins there mixed in, so I'll have a ton of videos on the way. If you watch all the way to the end, I really do appreciate it. You're a real MVP. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know what you want to see me do next. Maybe there's stuff you want to see me cover first before other things on the test server. Let me know. And as always, stay frost. There. Of course, this kind of goes without saying, but I'm going to tack it on at the end of the video anyway. It's kind of a post-end video note, which I don't know why I do, but Yagarath could really do with a frosty skin. Why doesn't she have one at launch? Vora had a skin at launch. Yagarath should have had one, but hopefully we get a frosty skin for her soon. I feel like it would fit her perfectly.